Shavua Tov, Agutavoch, and welcome to our program. This is the Shabbos after Chof Ov, the old site of Agoyen Achosidam Kubol, the Belevi Yitzchok, Nishmos Eidan Schneerson, the father of the Rebbe. Moreover, the old site was on Wednesday. The Wednesday, the Thursday, and the Friday have a special sh- uh, connection to this Shabbos. The Sunday, the Monday, and the Tuesday have a connection to last Shabbos, and the Wednesday, the Thursday, and the Friday have a connection to this Shabbos, and to prove it that from when- on Wednesday we say what's known by Chassidim as the cleaner Lechun the small Lechun in the Shir Shel Yim. So Wednesday was Chofov, and this is the Shabbos after Chofov. The the Parsha is of is of course Vehoyo Ekev Tishmun. Vehoyo Ekev Tishmun. The Rebbe says in a Maimel that starts with the words Vehoyo Ekev Tishmun that the Rebbe said on Parshas Ekev Chofov in the year Tovshin Chof Zion nineteen uh, Chof Zion is sixty seven. And the Rebbe asks the, the question that arguably it should have said, And it's going to be, if you will listen. Oh, like it says, uh, If you are going to follow, then you will have the reward. Here it says, Which means that you are going to listen. And the question is, sometimes you listen, and sometimes we should listen. What does Ekev Tishmon, that we are going to listen, what does that mean? And the Rebbe brings on behalf of the Tzemach Tzedek, that Tzemach Tzedek asks this question, and the Tzemach Tzedek says, Vehoyo Ekev, it's going to be Ekev. Ekev means the heel, the heel of times, which means the end of the days, the days of Ikves at the Meshicha, the heel of Mashiach. Vehoyo, and it's going to be Ekev, at the time of the heel of Mashiach, in other words, before Mashiach comes, Tishmeun, you are going to listen. It's not going to be a question of if, it's going to be a question that you are going to listen and therefore you will be privy to all of these brochas. And the Rebbe brings the, the Rambam, where the Rambam says, that the Tero has promised that the end the Jewish people are destined to do tshuva at the end of the Golos, umiyad eini golin, and immediately they will be redeemed. So this is talking about Ekev Tishmon, our times. Ekev means the heel of the Golos, the end of the Golos. Tishmon, then you are going to listen. That's what the Rebbe answers on behalf of the Rebbe, the Tzemech Tzedek. As mentioned, this is the Shabbos after Chof Ov. Where, where was the Rebbe when he was told about the Histalkus, about the passing of his father? Tov Shindalad is 1944. Where was the Rebbe um, when the Rebbe was told the news about his father? Chof Ov, Tov Shindalad. 1944. And the story known by Chassidim is that a telegram came to 770. Uh, it was the time of the war. And uh, Bochlim saw the telegram and they opened the telegram because who knows, you know, a, a telegram that comes in the time of the war may be an emergency. And they saw what it said. And they called the Rebbe in his house. It was in the morning. The Rebbe answers the phone. And she says that the Rebbe is not home. And maybe he went to work in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. They should call there and see if he's there. They can, and then they can talk to him. They called the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Uh, and they were told that he didn't come yet today. So now they don't know what to do. The Rebbe is not in his house. He is not in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And they figured, who knows, maybe the Rebbe is in his room. But they weren't sure. So they walked over to the Rebbe's door. 
Uh, the Rebbe was working in the same room that was later the Rebbe's Yechidus room, and they knocked on the door. As soon as they knocked on the door, as if the Rebbe was standing by the door, the Rebbe opened, and they gave the Rebbe the telegram. Later, someone asked the Rebbe, how come the Rebbe did not go to his place of work at that time, temporarily he was working in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And the Rebbe answered that when he got up that morning, he felt that he is going to get, he's going to receive the news about the passing of his father. And he wanted to receive the news while he was in 770. And this is why the Rebbe stayed that day. The Rebbe did not go to the Brooklyn Navy Yard. The Rebbe stayed in his room. It's also known by Chassidim that uh, the Rebbe, of course, after that, davened by the Omid every day, three times a day. And in the morning, the Rebbe davened with the minion of the Bochlim, of the Yeshiva. I believe the minion started at 9.30. It was supposed to start at 9.30. The Rebbe, of course, came out exactly at, at 9.30 from his room with his talus and film, and he was waiting to say the first Kaddish before Hedu. And generally, um, <laughs> you're looking for a minion. A minion to Hedu is generally six people, and then to Shemineser you get ten people. The Rebbe wanted, uh, and generally the six people you get to Bolchu. The Rebbe wanted ten people to Hedu. Now you can imagine it's not 770 of today, it's 770, <coughs> excuse me, of 1944. Uh, it was not the same crowd. And to get 10 people to, to Haidu at 930 exactly was not, was, 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 was not very, very easy. And sometimes the Rebbe had to wait a few minutes. And we all know how precious time was to the Rebbe. So the Rebbe told it to the previous Rebbe. And the previous Rebbe called the Shmuel and told them that they should make sure that there should be a minion when the Rebbe starts davening at 9.30. And the, the previous Rebbe said to him, By my nadim is a minutayo. By my son-in-law, a minute is a year. And if the Rebbe had to wait five minutes, that is five years, that is a long time. Um, so as mentioned, in, 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 in this Maimed, in another Maimodim, the Rebbe speaks about, about the Mesidus Nefesh of his father, and the Rebbe asks a question. The, uh, the question the Rebbe asks is that it seems that because, and the Rebbe says it also in this Maimed, that because his father was incarcerated, and then it was in Golos, and he was exiled, that had a that had an effect on his life, and because of that he became sick, and because of that his life was shortened. And the question is, because of Mr. Desnefesh, because of work, that, that should cause the life of, of, the, of, of, of a Jew to be shortened? And the Rebbe answers that the accomplishments of his father were not shortened, and that his father was able to accomplish in the years that he was given to be in this world, more than people who lived much, much, much longer. He was able to accomplish in his years much more than others were able to accomplish in many, more, in many, many more years. And in a Fablingen, and this is Shabbos Pashas Ekev, on the 20th of, of, of Tovshin Nun, 1990, the Rebbe speaks about the name of his father. Levi, and what does Levi stand for? And Levi means to cleave. Hapam yelove ishi elai, that my husband will cleave it to me. And the Rebbe brings from from the Rambam. Then the Rambam says, "Velei shevet Levi bilvad." Not only at the end of Hilchas Shmita ve'Yevul, not only. Will the, will the tribe of Levi, are they dedicated to Hashem? But every Jew who wants to Hashem, not Veluchi, that his spirit will contribute it, every Jew can become 
just like uh, uh, just like Levi, and if and, he, and his spirit will com, com, contribute, and he is going to make the decision. Lamed lifnei Hashem say that he is going to stand in front of God and to serve His Almighty God. Then he has a halizen is kadesh kadesh kadoshim. That Jew can become the holy of holies. In other words, that's what slavery stands for. That it's not that that it's not only reserved for the the, the tribe of Levi, but every Jew that wants to copy a page out of the book of Levi, so to speak, can do that, and he will be sanctified. Kedesh Kadoshim, the Holy of Holies. And the Rebbe says that you find in the tribe of Levi two uh, opposing so to speak, phenomenon. On the one hand, Levi was higher than everyone. Levi was the one who was who cleaved to God, and they were the special the, the special uh, shevet. Nevertheless, Levi also had the distinction of Yehudu Mishpatecha Leyankev that they would teach Taylor to others. He says, in the Rebbe's father, you saw these two great phenomena. On the one hand, he was he was a great Tadolf and a great Prasik and a great leader. And on the other hand, he was teaching everyone. He had a connection with everyone in the community. Not only with the people who were great scholars in the community, but also with the simple people of the community. So he embodied and personified the, the idea of Levi. On the one hand, he was exalted. On the, other, on the one hand, he was higher than, than everyone else. And on the other hand, he was also, he, he, he connected and reached out to each, in, to each and every individual. And as we see in his Hanhoge, and Hanhoge for the Bolivie Yitzchok, and the Lebet Sanchander writes it in her memoirs, how he took care of every person in the community, independent of what the statute of, statute of that individual was. The Lebet draws our attention to another point. Baruch Hashem, we have a lot of the Sfodim of the Levi Yitzchak that he wrote because there was no paper, there was no ink that he wrote on the margins. Oh, and it's interesting that he would write on the margins or he would write Sfodim all the years when he was alive. From what he wrote on those years, we do not have yet. That he writes Leisato, so far. However, what, what he wrote when he was in Golos, that we have. Which means what he wrote with Mr. Desnefesh and with inks that had all kinds of colors because there was no, there was no ink. So the Levitz and Chanda made her own ink. And since she wasn't a specialist in making ink, the ink came out black and blue and, and, and red and green, all kinds of colors. And his father wrote on the margin with the ink that the Levitz made that, those falling with that ink, those falling made it out to us. And to top it all off, what was the statue of the Bolivia Yitzchak? What was the greatness of the Bolivia Yitzchak? So the Altar Rebbe says in Tanya, what does a tzaddik do on the day of his Yorzeit? So the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya that his pale Yeshua is beked of olets. The tzaddik uh, uh, brings Yeshua's salvation. It's in Pedik of Ches in the Geras Akedish. Um, as the Rebbe brings here, O pale Yeshua is beked of olets. He affects salvation in the thick of the land. Lechaped alavein adel to atone for the sins of the generation. Afgam al is also for the deliberate sins. Now that is a tzaddik. Number one, that is a tzaddik. It's not everyone. Not every pious Jew. It's a Jew that's a tzaddik. Also, there's a question whether that means on the time, on the day when he passed away, or every year. 
Like, for instance, in the case of the Alter Rebbe, there are others who say, when Alter Rebbe said it, Alter Rebbe meant it, that on the day of Kovdala Tevis, the old site, the one time Tov Kufa and Gimel, when the Alter Rebbe passed away. But the Rebbe says that's not the Pshat. The Pshat is that every year Kovdala Tevis, not only Tov Kufa and Gimel, every year Kovdala Tevis. The Rebbe says that clearly. And here the Rebbe says the same thing with his father. The Rebbe brings the same piece of ta- the same piece what the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, in Sivan Kovches, that this goes also on the believer Yitzchok, that every year on the day of Chof Cheshrun, what does the believer Yitzchok do on Chof Cheshrun? He atones for the sins of the generation. Avgam alas even for the deliberate sins. So the believer Yitzchok today, on, on Chof Cheshrun, and, 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 and we know Menuchosei Kovet is, alma, is an al, in Alma Ata, at the end of the world. At the end of the world, to your left, he atones for the sins of the generation, also for the deliberate sins for the entire generation, and asks Almighty God to prepare the world and to send sins. The world is now atoned, and the, the sins are atoned. So now we are Kalim, we are vessels for the Gyulaho Amitis Vyashlemo coming our way, Gesundheit und Friedlichkeit.